got the eagles just right when we started recording, <laughs> huh? Okay, well, welcome back to the mm Wrestling Show. Thank welcome. you for tuning in or listening, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast. Uh, yeah, welcome. Let's uh, get into it. Uh, well, this week we're going to cover... I already did an instant take on uh, the Elimination Chamber, so we'll quickly go over what you thought about that mm -hmm. uh, over those matches, and we'll do you know, NXT 205 Live, Raw and SmackDown from this week, uh, and also the news. So let's go ahead, let's get into it, let's do the news. Okay. Fox possibly to buy WWE TV rights. It would be first time WWE would be on broadcast TV. Awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've been hearing a lot about this this week. So right now, um, Fox, they, um, you know, there's rumors out there that they're going to be wanting to buy WWE, uh, the TV rights, so that mm -hmm. they could be broadcasting them on their network, which would make a lot of sense for both. Fox Network and for um, WWE because it would be the first time that they got a chance to be on network broadcast TV which means everybody would get a chance to see right now they're on USA Network mm -hmm. so you have to have some sort of cable package to get it oh. um, but if you get into you know like a network broadcast station mm -hmm. it's just like it's available for everybody you know even off basic cable or even if you just have like the HD antenna type of thing mm -hmm. so there's potentially a lot more viewers which potentially could get you a lot more ad revenue because you know advertisers you become even more attractive because more people have could potentially be watching um, so you can just make that much more money and obviously WWE is in the business of making money mm -hmm. uh, so that would be a good move for them um, I know, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Colin Cowherd. He's like one of my favorite sports radio guys out there. He used mm -hmm. to be on ESPN. Now he works for Fox, and he's always made fun of wrestling and made fun of wrestling fans. And just the fact, so this week he was actually at SmackDown, and he went backstage, and he was like taking pictures with the wrestlers and mm -hmm. like he was even on his radio show saying you know that he went and he had a good time mm -hmm. and like ever since he moved to Fox like from ESPN he's always like seemed like he's a you know he's a company guy he's in with the bosses he's you no know, he knows what's going on so when mm -hmm. like, since he's like talking so positively about wrestling now wrestling fans and how cool it is like makes me definitely think like okay yeah like they're definitely courting WWE to try to get some sort of deal made uh, right now UFC is also on um, on Fox but their contract is coming up and reportedly both WWE and um, the UFC are hoping to get somewhere around 400 million like a uh, dollar contract mm -hmm. with Fox and Fox you know, is rumored to that they would spend that much more money on uh, on uh, what you might call it on WWE because they're already they already get however many like three point something million viewers every week on Monday Night Raw, which you know, like I said, could potentially be more because of the fact that they would be on broadcast TV. Cool. Yeah. All right. Brock Lesnar meets with UFC President Dana White. Okay, yeah, and then we'll talk about the, this a little bit more when uh -huh. we get to the what happened on Monday Night Raw, but Brock Lesnar's contract is, you know, expiring soon. Mm -hmm. um, he fought in the UFC in the past. Um, he's done this to the WWE in the past, like, you know, near the end of his contract, going back and meeting the with the UFC and potentially going back there um, to fight. He's older, so if he did want to go back to the UFC, like, he'd have to do it now. Otherwise, he's going to, you know, like, mm -hmm. I don't know how good he'd be now because he's older. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was never, I mean, he's just a, 
a big guy who's mm-hmm. like crazy athletic for a guy who should be that big. Like he was never a great fighter. He could just, you know, knock other guys out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he'd never had the most technical skill. So if he was going to do it, he'd have to do it now before he got older and weaker and slower. So mm-hmm. we'll see what happens there. Um, again, that'll tie more into Monday Night Raw. Uh, so we'll talk about it more when we get to that point. Uh, okay. Anything else you got yeah. for us here? So congratulations to Jarius J.J. Robertson on getting the Warrior Award, the 2018 Warrior Award. Yeah, congratulations to him. Yeah, he's going to receive that at uh, the Hall of Fame induction this year. He has biliary artesia, which is a chronic liver disease. He's already had several, like dozens of surgeries and two liver transplants already so yeah yeah he's a fighter yeah definitely a strong kid i saw that he also you know like he's really a bit ad- advocate because he's needed you know organs himself that he's a bit ad- advocate like on reminding people to mm-hmm. you know to sign up to be an organ donor and um he's got some sort of foundation set up to you know, help people get organs or something like that, or remind people to, you know, donate to those kind of causes. So, yeah. does good work for the community. So, yeah, yeah. again, congratulations to Jarius JJ Robertson. All right. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, let's get into uh, our review, our quick review, since, like I said, I already did an instant take on the Elimination Chamber. Uh, let's just do a quick take on what you thought. Um, what happened on the kickoff? We had the. It was. I'm not sure if you got to see the kickoff because I know you were out. Um, I think you just saw the main event. You didn't see the kickoff stuff, did you? No. Like the pre-show stuff. I don't think I saw. Yeah, any so you of didn't. That, yeah, so. so you didn't see like the Bo Dallas, Kurt Axel, the Miz versus. Um, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. No. No, okay, no, I didn't think so. Um, well, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson won that match. Um, no surprise there. I'm surprised. Like, they need to find more stuff for them to do on the regular shows. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, yeah, to kick off the uh, show, we had... Um, it was the first ever women's elimination chamber, which featured Alexa Bliss, uh, Mickey James, Sasha Banks, Bailey. Uh, Sasha, I mean, yeah, yeah, Sasha Banks, Sonya Deville, and Mandy Rose. Um, now I know what I thought of this match. Everybody already heard what I said. What did you think of the match? Oh, I thought it was interesting. Yeah. I noticed that they didn't use the cage as much, but I mean, it was still pretty good. They did, like, it was pretty good in the ring. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. I mean, I I feel like, you know, for the first ever women's elimination chamber, I thought they, you know, they didn't use the, like you said, they didn't use the cage a whole lot, but mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, the use that they did get out of it, like, it was good. Like when Mickey mm-hmm. James, like she did her, her little dive off the top of the pod and mm-hmm. pinned, uh, I think it was Mandy Rose, and then, um, you know, the whole, like, Thing with like Sasha Bailey and Alexa climbing the yeah. climbing the cage and Alexa Bliss being in the middle and mm-hmm. Sasha and Bailey chasing after her yeah and then Alexa did her twisted Bliss off the top of the pod onto Sasha Banks on the outside so I thought that was mm-hmm. pretty good they didn't do a whole lot but you know the use that they did get out of it I thought it was good yeah yeah it was yeah and then what else did we had we had the after that, we had um, we had the Bar versus Titus Worldwide for the tag team titles match. What did you think of that? Um, I thought it was good. Yeah, from what I can remember. <laughs> yeah, it was a couple. Of things I was gonna there. say, yeah, well, from what you can remember, for me, this wasn't a super memorable match. I really like. Um, I really like Apollo Crews in, of Titus Worldwide, and I think that they mm-hmm. could, you know, get some more for them uh, to do yeah. uh, 
on like the regular show, so I was kind of hoping that Titus Worldwide would actually would have won the titles here. Yeah. Um, but that was not the case, so uh, you know the bar ended up winning, so they hold the titles, and we'll just have to keep watching the storyline. There's not a lot for the bar to do right now on mm -hmm. Raw either. There's not a whole lot of other good tag like all the good tag teams seem to be on SmackDown, so. Yeah. Uh, we we'll just kind of have to keep rolling and see what goes there. Uh, what else then? Um, we had uh, the match, which was Nia Jax versus Asuka, and it was a qualifying match for Nia. Uh, you know, if she would have won this match, it would have got her into WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. um, like for a triple threat match for Asuka yeah. and the title. And then, uh, you know, for Asuka, it would have been her first loss if she would have lost the match, but she pulled out the win against Naya. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you think of this match? I thought it was pretty good. I thought I was happy that Asuka won, of course, and I thought I liked how they had um, Naya just pummel Asuka after the after she won. So. Yeah, 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 I like that too. I thought that was good. I kind of, you know, like... Yeah, it makes Asuka look good because, you know, she was the good guy. She didn't do anything bad to win the match. Mm -hmm. um, she still won, caught, kept her streak, and it still showed that, like, Naya is, like, this force to be reckoned with. Like, yeah. even though she lost the match, she's still this big, powerful, beastly woman. So, yeah. you know, be careful, don't get in her way kind of thing. Uh, so... Yeah, overall, I was happy with the match. Uh, I was, you know, like I said, I was worried going into it that mm -hmm. Oscar would lose, and I kind of felt like, oh, man, I hope she doesn't lose, because then if she gets all the way, you know, if she loses before she gets to WrestleMania, I felt like that was, that would have kind of taken away from the whole mystique of her getting all the way to WrestleMania and winning the championship yeah. there. So I'm glad that uh, she won and still has a chance to win mm -hmm. the WWE Women's Championship uh, as an undefeated person uh, so let's see what happened after that we had um we had a promo with roman reigns saying that he was going to win mm -hmm. then we had matt hardy versus bray wyatt um matt hardy won this match what did you think about this i always enjoy watching bray wyatt and matt hardy so yeah, yeah. especially matt hardy yeah yeah i enjoy matt hardy's persona and character and I just kind of wish, like, for me, and I guess we can get a little bit more into it when we get to Rob, but it just didn't go anywhere. I thought, like, I, mm -hmm. you know, the outcome was the outcome I thought it would be. I thought that Matt Hardy would win, and he did, mm -hmm. but I thought they would go somewhere further along with the storyline, but that hasn't been the case yet. Like, it still seems to be stuck in, like, some sort of feud between the two, and, you mm -hmm. know they've had a couple matches already so I feel like it should be time to and this would have been the perfect time especially leading up to Wrestlemania this would have been a time to like you know change something in the storyline that could have moved it forward um but mm -hmm. that is what that was yeah 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 I don't know. uh after that then we had uh the Ronda Rousey signing this is um when Kurt Angle Triple H and Stephanie McMahon came out um, what did you think of this whole signing thing, you know, Kurt Angle kind of like fumbling around and like then telling Rhonda like, oh yeah, they want to, they can't wait to sign you because they want to control you and uh -huh. oh yeah, oh hey, Rhonda, by the way, Stephanie said that you're a wash up and even she could take you now. <laughs> <laughs> and that was silly. Yeah. And for the then, most part. Yeah. And then Triple H comes walking. Walks at least we gotta, yeah. And at then, least we gotta see her. Oh, what's her name? Rhonda. Mm -hmm. In the action. Yeah. See what she can do. Yeah, she slammed Triple wrestling. H through that table, and yeah. then Stephanie McMahon came over and gave her that big slap, and you could tell it was a real slap. She slapped her hard, and yeah. you could see her face was like red. Yeah. So she took that good. Um, what did you think about her promo overall? Um. Yeah, I thought it was pretty. I enjoyed like, it. Like like her performance specifically. No, yeah, it was just like a little bit. So 
Like, I can't wait to see her when she's actually in the ring. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I felt like, she, you know, she fumbled a little bit with her um, promo, like, on the mic a little bit. But I feel like it's to be nervous you're at a big-time mm-hmm. pay-per-view. It's your first real promo appearance like she yeah she showed up at Royal Rumble and pointed at the sign and everything but like mm-hmm. this is her first like okay she's on the mic for a real promo like in front of the fans and everything so she came off a little bit nervous but I felt like overall it was good she did everything else good slam Triple H to the table and taking that slap and everything yeah. and you know she was you know made that mean face so yeah I think she did good there yeah she did and then after that, we had our seven-man elimination chamber matches, and this is the one where Braun Strowman power slammed everybody and pinned everybody except for Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns had to, I think he gave him like one or two Superman punches and two spears for sure to mm-hmm. take him out to finally get the pin on Braun Strowman. But what did you think about this match overall? The men's elimination chamber with the first time with seven men inside the chamber. Like I said, they didn't use the cage as much, but they did very well fighting each other. Yeah. On the mat, in the ring. Yeah. I, yeah, I would say this was a match where I was surprised that they didn't use the cage a lot more than what they did. Um, just from what I've watched with... Uh, I've been watching all the past in late Elimination Chambers now... And in almost all of them, they use the cage quite a bit. Um, mm-hmm. There's a couple where they don't use it that much. Um, but yeah, this one, it, it did kind of stick out that the cage wasn't really used as a weapon as it has been in the past. Especially mm-hmm. the first five or six, you know, it was used as a weapon a lot. Right. Um, I think this time around, like, they definitely showed what they can do as prefer- as performers, so, without the help of a cage. Right, yeah, which is fine and all, but if you're having a cage mess specifically, <laughs> then, you know, I feel like you should use it. Didn't they, like, break part of it, like, just, like, whatever those little glass cubby things are? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's when Braun Strowman at the end when... Like, a couple of times that happened. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, especially at the end when Braun Strowman, they did the same thing that happened with Asuka and Nia. You know, you they got the guy to win, Roman Reigns, but then the guy who's the powerful guy, even mm-hmm. though he technically takes a loss, he still looks, you know, super powerful and, yeah. you know, like a big scary guy. Yeah, Braun um, Strowman. He, yeah. Was, he was very entertaining. It took, like, how many? It was fun to see, like, multiple guys go up against him and try to take him down and yeah and then at one point yeah because um there was the move where we had uh you know uh roman reigns the leader of the shield when Mm -hmm. the three of them are actually in there usually you know seth rollins and dean ambrose like throw somebody up on his shoulders for him to for the three of them to do like a big power slam yeah and then for this they had john cena and roman reigns uh, there and then who was it uh, who helped pick him up I, I don't remember who the other two that helped pick him up I think it was Seth Rollins and Finn Balor helped yeah. pick up Braun and put them on, Sin, on Cena's and Roman shoulders and all four of them slammed him and all four of them tried to pin him and he still kicked out Yeah. <laughs> so yeah I thought it was a good move it definitely made Braun Strowman still look strong even though he ultimately mm-hmm. ended up losing the match now, what is your opinion with the whole Roman Reigns winning the match? Like, do you like that? Like, I've been listening to a lot of other wrestling podcasts and watching a lot of wrestling shows and reading wrestling articles that, you know, like, people are like, oh, it's so predictable. We knew Roman Reigns would win. Uh-huh. Like, what, what, what is your whole opinion on that? Well, like, I just started getting into this, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference to me like I haven't seen Roman Reigns win anything yet so right yeah and for me yeah for a casual fan or somebody who's just getting into it yeah they haven't seen it yet and then to me the other thing is uh like when I hear so many people complaining about how predictable it is to me I think like 
yeah, you go into it and the good guy won, the guy who's mm-hmm. supposed to be the good guy, you know, predictable. Uh, for me, it's not just the outcome, it's the journey there. Like, to me, overall, the match mm-hmm. was good. Like, I thought Braun Strowman looked, still looked really good and it made Roman Reigns look really good. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it's the journey. Like, whenever I go to a Batman movie or a Superman movie or an Avengers movie or any of the Marvel mm-hmm. movies, like, I don't go there and then, you know, I'm not surprised at the end when the good guy wins. I'm not like, oh, mm-hmm. wow, oh, I'm so surprised. Like, mm-hmm. and I still like those movies. Like, <laughs> yes, it's predictable. It's predictable, but everything leading up to the end, like, it's that was the good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and to me, so, and then I know you didn't get to watch the after show either, but on the after show, uh, something I hope plays out, because mm-hmm. Roman Reigns now is going to get to go to WrestleMania and face Brock Lesnar for the Universal title. What I'm hoping is that mm-hmm. Roman Reigns will win the Universal title this time versus Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. And because at the after show, Roman Reigns was talking with um, Renee Young and um, Peter Rosenberg and saying that, you know, they were talking about, they are asking him something about, like, oh, what do you think about um, Braun Strowman? you know, attacking you at like that after the match and your guys' um, career seemed to be on like a parallel course. You mm-hmm. guys are on par with each other. And then he's, you know, Roman said something like, oh yeah, you know, it's almost like Braun and I, like we're Batman and Joker, like we're meant to fight forever. And for me, that would be great. I would love to see Roman Reigns win the, uh, the uh, universal title. And then it be like because they're still both pretty young guys, Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. They could have feud for years and years and years to come. Still, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, I would, I would like to see that. I think that would be good. I think people are too worried about like the immediate outcome of this specific match. Mm-hmm. Like you got to think long term, like the, for the story long term, it could be a feud that could be really good for years to come. Like no yeah. matter what, even if you're somebody who's been a fan of wrestling for a long time and you've been watching Roman Reigns for a while and you've been predicting this f- win for a long time and other wins and it seems like they're really trying to push him to be the champion, you know, you got to think of the story long term. Like it's not just like mm-hmm. one match. It's like something that could go on for years. Like you could have a lot of really good matches between. Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman for years to come and I, I hope they set that up and I hope it turns out as good as I'm hoping <laughs> that is yeah that would be interesting yeah 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 uh-huh. maybe you know viewers want more of a you know surprise kind of like you know surprise aspect I don't you're I can't right. think of the word right now. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, maybe they do, but I mean, it, who else would have people have want to want? It would have been Braun Strowman. There wasn't like a, a I don't really think, I, like I said, for me, this going into this match, it was one of the most exciting ones I was excited about just because it was like, I thought going into this match, like everybody who was in the match, like I thought, had, you know, like I could see as being the winner for the match and going on uh, to be in Wrestlemania like there was not one of them who I thought like oh yeah I wouldn't want to see them win or like yeah, you know even though the outcome that happened that was the most predictable you know like I said I could have saw any of them winning whereas in the past all the ones I've been watching I've watched like mm-hmm. I think there's now with this women's one and this one that just happened for the seven man one I think there's been like 22 elimination chamber matches now yeah. and I've watched like 15 or 16 of them and in every single one there's always like two or three guys where I'm like oh I know those guys have no chance like they're going to be pinned and they always get pinned like there were always some of the first ones out of those matches uh-huh. and then this one it was like I have no idea who's going to be uh-huh. at the end like any of them like could make it to the end yeah so I thought it was good for that. So I, that, I mean, just that was the uh, unpredictability for me. Yeah. Uh, so let's get into the other stuff we watched. That was all of the, uh, all of the um, elimination chamber overall 
it was it was good match or a good event. Mm-hmm. Um, let's get into NXT. Uh, I know you didn't watch these with me, so I'll just go over these real quick. Again, this week um, on this this week on NXT, we started out with Velveteen Dream versus uh, Tyler Bate. Velveteen Dream won. I love Velveteen Dream. Mm-hmm. Um, he did his little purple rainmaker off the top rope it's like it's an elbow mm-hmm. uh, I really like Tyler Bate as well both of these guys are still really young both really good performers so it was a good match um, I can't wait to see Velveteen Dream make it to the main roster and get in like whether it's Raw or Smackdown like he's to me like his whole character like the way he does his moves his promos the guy is destined to be a star like I, I can't wait to see Velveteen Dream mm-hmm. like on the main on the main roster uh what do we have after that oh we had the john gargano um he signs his termination letter so you know i had you watch that match with yeah. me when he lost to andrade cian almas and then he has to give up his nxt career mm-hmm. so to me i thought that meant like oh boom he was done right away but they, he signs this contract on nxt this past week and it you know specifically in the promo the NXT general manager William Regal tells him like okay yeah this is your contract saying that you're going to be ending but you still have to fill out the re- the rest of your contract and show up at all the rest of the events that we have you scheduled for so he will still be involved for the next like four or five weeks I think um, which will give us will give him a chance to finish up some storylines like the guy his friend that attacked his former friend that attacked him during his match that Mm -hmm. you know helped cause him lose to lose um i'm sure there'll be some sort of like that might be his last match of while he's still at nxt where you know he gets like a revenge against him or something or Mm -hmm. you know does something to get reinstated with um nxt but i'm sure he's gonna be moving up to the main roster because he is such a fan favorite uh so after that, then we had um, Cesar um, Bononi versus Adam Cole. Um, Adam Cole won here. Um, a lot of fans seem to like Adam Cole um, in NXT. To me, he's just like, he's okay. <laughs> so it was a, it was an okay match. Uh, after that, we had um, Kyrie Sane versus Shayna Baszler. Um, Shayna Baszler got the win here. Uh, she did her Kira Fudublam off the top rope, and then she got Kyrie Sane in a Kira Fudu clutch uh, and got Kyrie Sane to submit. I um, mm-hmm. feel like this is setting up a good feud. I know Kyrie Sane um, and Shayna Baszler were both in the Mae Young Classic, which I told you I want to watch with you sometime since we haven't gotten around to watching that yet. Um, they fought against each other there. Now they're framing it against each other here, so I feel like, you know, they have a good feud going on. And then after that, we had Andrade Cien Almas come out with Zillian Vega, and then they were just, like, gloating and making fun of Johnny Gargano for losing and having to now leave um, NXT. And then Aleister Black came out. You know, he wants a shot at the NXT Championship now, and then Killian Dane came out. And he also wants a shot at the NXT mm-hmm. Championship. So then Alistair um, Black and Killian Dane started fighting in the ring. And under the AC and Almas and Zillian Vega, they just left. Um, so I'm sure there's going to be some kind of feud. I don't mm-hmm. know if it's going to end up in a three-way match between those three guys. Or if Killian Dane or Alistair Black are just going to have to fight it out to see who actually gets to go for the championship. Um, but all three of those guys are good performers, so I'll be excited to see all the matches that they set up during this storyline that they got going on there. Uh, okay, I'll do 205 Live next as well. On 205 Live, uh, we had, we're still going on with our Cruiserweight elimination. Um, we're in the quarterfinals around now. Uh, first up, we had Cedric Alexander versus TJP. Cedric Alexander got the win here. And then we also had Kaliso versus Roderick Strong. Roderick Strong got the win. Um, and ex- I mean, on 205 Live, I still feel like the show is getting better. The performances have been better. Mm-hmm. You know, they've gotten rid of a lot of the, like, 
dumb gimmicky stuff that's like a lot more like wrestling now okay. um so you know i like it a lot better so hopefully they they keep going in that direction and hopefully it's going to start drawing fans in to start watching because they're having good matches over there um they just got to get more eyes on it and get fans to like stay because it it 205 Live happens right after SmackDown Mm -hmm. Um, but you know a lot of the fans like they're there for the main SmackDown show so they leave right after SmackDown's over so they gotta find a way to get people to stay for the 205 Live taping because a lot of the a lot of the show like even though like I'm putting on the like I'm watching and they're putting on a good performance and it's getting me excited Mm -hmm. I'm not excited as I could be because I kind of liking it to like you know if you watch a tv show with a laugh track yeah. and then you like go watch it on youtube and somebody like has taken the laugh track out you kind of notice like oh like maybe those jokes aren't as funny you know like yeah. like they're so kind of funny but it's kind of awkward without yeah. the laugh there and it's a, it's a thing with watching these matches like these guys are doing really good performances but because the crowd is so small mm-hmm. and like they're just not really cheering anything mm-hmm. like you don't feel the same electricity as you know when you feel of like oh yeah that that was like really exciting and everybody's really excited like you're kind of excited yourself because they just did something really cool but it's like oh but it's kind of quiet (laughs) yeah (laughs) like you can kind of feel it in the tv broadcast (laughs) yeah so that was 205 it's better for wrestling yeah so that was 205 and nxt let's get into the shows that we both watched together so let's get into raw uh, Raw, this was, you know, what happened immediately, you know, right after Elimination Chamber and the fallout from everything from that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, we, to open up Raw, we had Alexa Bliss come out with Mickey James, and it was a promo, and she says she's going to beat Asuka. Um, then Asuka comes out, and then Nia oh. comes out uh, and attacks. And then Sasha and Bailey come out, and then mm-hmm. it becomes kind of like, you know, everybody's fighting yeah. with each other. Um, not a lot, a lot to say about that there, but that does kind of remind me. So, you know, with the Elimination Chamber match uh, and Alexa Bliss winning there, and at the top of the Raw promo, they did make it sound like, because Asuka has never officially announced who she was going to face at Wrestlemania if she was going to go against Asuka I mean if she's going to go against Alexa or Charlotte yeah um but at the top of Raw they said Asuka would be going against Alexa so I I think that's going to be the official thing now Mm -hmm. um I still haven't seen anything posted anywhere that that's the official match but um that's where it seems like it's going but I, I want to ask you like so what did you think of the whole uh promo that Alexa Bliss cut right after winning the Elimination Chamber. What promo? Okay, when she was on the mic, that's called cutting the promo, she was on the mic right after she won the Elimination Chamber. Right. And she was, like, saying about how happy she was. Oh, and, yeah. you know, all the, you know, you know, it was all for the little girls and women out there because they that could feel her dreams. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know. Right, so she said yeah. that, you know follow your dreams but your dreams are going to be crushed because I'll be standing in your way kind of thing yeah. like the only one that's going to achieve their dreams is me because I'm the best kind of thing yeah. what did you think about the promo did you think it was good did you, like did you like it I like the promo it was a good promo you like the promo it was a good it. promo <laughs> yeah <laughs> what about it did I like I liked how it was like yes sincere yet she stayed in character yeah so yeah. that's what I liked about it Okay, good. And then, uh, so then after that, we had John Cena come out, and he uh, cut a promo. You know, he's talking about how he lost Elimination Chamber, so he still doesn't have a way to get to WrestleMania, but he wants to be to WrestleMania. And then he says, uh, he's calling, you know, he's like, oh, there's going to be a match between me and Undertaker. And then, you know, the fans go crazy, and then he says, oh, but that's not going to happen so we think mm-hmm. everybody gets all disappointed then he says so I'm going to go I, to, you I, know I'm going to go to Smackdown and um, try to find a way to get to Wrestlemania over there like what did you think of that 
Well, what I thought was that I think that maybe they will do that. Yeah. Bring see, back the Undertaker. Yeah, see, me too. I still <laughs> don't think that that's out of the picture. I think, yeah. you know, like, why would you bring something that far into and cut it into a promo like that if it's not something that you could is still the possibility of you doing it you know like yeah so you know and we'll get to him we get smacked down so he decides he's gonna leave and he's gonna join smackdown to try to get a way to wrestlemania mm -hmm. uh, but i will just talk to about that more when we get to this smackdown segment yeah. let's get on to after that we had uh the miz kind of promo and he said um you know, he wants to be the best Intercontinental Champion of all time. He's only like 60 days away from that or so now of being like the longest draining, you know, combined Intercontinental Champion of all time. How long he's held the title, like for the different times he's held it combined all that time together. He would have held it the longest. Um, and he wants to have, you know, the title, the Intercontinental title to be at... Um, Wrestlemania yeah. and then um, you know he's like complaining because Kurt Angle hasn't even told him who his opponent at Wrestlemania would be and then we get um, Seth Rollins comes out and then we get a match between Miz and Seth Rollins um, and then in this match um, Seth Rollins got the win um, what did you think about this match between um, Miz and Seth Rollins um, I enjoyed it. I I don't remember exactly what happened. Who won that one? Was it Seth Rollins Seth won? Seth Rollins. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. I'm glad she thought it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it was good. Uh, you know, it was a big win. Uh, Seth Rollins got the win there. He was all excited to get the win. He was about to celebrate, and then boom, Finn Balor's music hits. Finn Balor starts coming out, and then Seth Rollins like looking at Finn Balor like, "What the heck, man? You're on my parade. I just got the win here." Mm -hmm. And then, you That's know, right. um, Finn Balor. Then there's supposed to be a match between um, Miz and Finn Balor. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what happened right away. Like how the the Miz tried to get out of it. I think the Miz Raj came out and like attacked Finn and then he was going to run out but then Kurt Angle told him no you have to get back in that ring and you have to have a match mm -hmm. with Finn Balor or you're not going to go to Wrestlemania and the Miz Raj has to leave the uh, leave ringside and then so Miz and Finn Balor officially have a match and Finn Balor won this match. Yeah. What did you think about this match? I also enjoyed it. I enjoyed that whole thing. Yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. beating up on the Miz and yeah, I like the whole thing too. I think the the match itself wasn't as good as the Seth Rollins match mm -hmm. um, with yeah. Miz, but uh, overall it was a good match, and I kind of like that. I feel like they obviously they're either setting up some sort of fatal three way between the three of them for the Intercontinental title, or there's some sort of like a Finn Balor Seth Rollins feud that's going to go. Um, Oh. To see who's going to get to face the Miz for mm -hmm. the for the title, and so we'll just have to keep watching to find out what they yeah. decide to set up for that, where the storyline goes there. Uh, Rollins cut a promo right after that, um, saying that he wants the Miz and he wants a inner kind of uh, title at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. We never saw anything with with Finn Balor mention anything about that. But I'm sure we're going to get something about that next week mm -hmm. um, so that we can keep setting up that feud. Um, after that, then we had um, Roman Reigns' promo. Uh, and he was saying, and this was the promo where Roman Reigns came out. Uh, Brock Lesnar was supposed to show at this Monday Night Raw. He was scheduled to be there. He no-showed. Yeah. And Roman Reigns came out and then he cut his promo saying like, oh, you know, Brock Lesnar, you know, he's a punk. He's not even here. Like, he's supposed to be here, but I'm here and I'm going to win the championship because, you know, like the fans deserve somebody who's actually going to be around mm -hmm. uh, to be the champion. Like, what did you think about this promo? Well, I thought that 
Well, I haven't seen Brock Lesnar fight at all, I think, and yeah, just him talking about him, I'm like, okay, I'm like, well, why is he talking about Brock Lesnar? Well, because that's who he, cause he's right, in the yeah. Elimination Chamber, so that's who he's going to fight at that's WrestleMania. That's what I thought yeah. at the moment, so, yeah. <laughs> or in the moment, so, but yeah, I am excited to see him fight Brock Lesnar. Yeah, yeah, me too. And then overall, for the promo itself, I thought it was like a really good promo. Like, it's the best promo I've seen Roman Reigns ever cut. Um, okay. For me, like, it actually... And because there's probably a little bit of truth behind it, because, like, mm -hmm. at this point in Brock Lesnar's career, he's only doing, like, four or five events a year. He doesn't come to, like, the Monday Night Raw... He's part of the Monday Night Raw roster, but he only shows up to, like, a couple of those a year now. Mm -hmm. um, so he's kind of, like, there's supposed to be this universal title. Like, back in the day, there was just, like, one WWE heavyweight title, and that was, like, the top championship in the company. Mm -hmm. And now we have, you know, there's a title for both Raw and SmackDown, but then there's the universal title. And that's supposed to be the top one right now. Mm -hmm. And I've heard other people talk on shows or like, you know, on podcasts or on YouTube or whatever. And some people have the opinion like, oh yeah, like we don't, don't put Brock Lesnar in there too much. Because if you start putting him in all the time at all the shows, then it, it'll just take away from the appeal of having him. It's like a treat to have him there. And to me... It, Brock Lesnar, like, yeah, he's, like, a big, scary guy, but he's not Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant, back in the 80s, like, he only did a few events here and there, but he was, like, you know, a seven-foot-something, 500-pound man, like, yeah. something, you know, crazy to see in real life. It's not something you would see in real life ever, you know, kind mm -hmm. of a thing, so it was a special kind of event to me for... And Andre Giant never, like, held the title for that long. Like, Brock Lesnar is, like, holding on to it for a long time. For me, you know, you want your star to be there all the time. You want to see you want to see that championship actually being, like, fought for and somebody defending it and, you know, getting the ch and other people getting the chance to win it. It just kind of seems at this point he's holding on to it. He's getting in the way. Like, I would like to see him lose it and see that title, like, actually be defended and fought or more often mm -hmm. like I don't have the opinion of like you want your star to be somebody who only shows up all the time like he wouldn't like be a fan of like any other sport and say like oh yeah I only want my star player to show up to a quarter of the games like you mm -hmm. wouldn't be a fan of the Patriots and be like oh I only want Tom Brady to play in a quarter of the games or oh hey I uh you know LeBron James I only want you to play in a quarter of the games mm -hmm. of the season, like, because you're the main attraction. No, you want them to be play in every game because the fans want to see them play in every game. You want to see, you want to see the best of the best every time you go. You don't want to see, you don't want to have a chance to see the best of the best. Like, you hope you get to see the best of the best every time you go. That's why you buy a ticket, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, I thought it was a really good promo. I was really impressed by Roman Reigns for this one. Like, there's been rumors, because uh, Brock Lesnar's contract is coming up. Mm -hmm. is, um, uh, he has met with the president of the UFC, so you know he could leave. And so there's rumors like, did he really not show? Or was he told to, or did it become part of the show that said, oh, don't come, and so we can cut this kind of promo. and like really it'll help Roman Reigns look good and if that's the case like I think they should just keep rolling with that storyline they should have Brock Lesnar like just keep saying like oh he's supposed to be at this event and then have him not show and then keep having Roman Reigns be like oh yeah see look at this guy he doesn't respect you guys because not only was this a good promo for a promo for Roman Reigns but like the fans really liked it like people were cheering because fans know that Brock Lesnar mm -hmm. might leave he's done this in the past the WWE where he's like threatened to leave and go to the back to the UFC mm -hmm. to get more money in a contract and I think fans are kind of especially more mainstream fans are just sick of that so they are like yeah you know what I'm not a big fan of Roman Reigns but he's right like who is the heck is this Brock Lesnar guy I think he is like just 
come whenever he wants to. So yeah. yeah, I think maybe if it really was something that WWE decided to do last minute, like they should just keep going because it's working. Yeah. Uh, after that, we had um, that's when they announced JJ uh, Jarius Robertson was going to be the Warrior Award winner. After that, we had Braun Strowman versus Elias. Uh, Strowman got the win uh, here um, with a disqualification. That's when Elias like pulled out the fire extinguisher and started oh, yeah. blowing it in <laughs> Braun Strowman's face. So they're setting up some sort of feud between because you know um, Elias has hit him with a guitar now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Braun Strowman hit him with that big stand-up bass. Yeah. Um, now. Elias has hit him with the fire extinguisher. Um, I'm a big fan of Elias. I'm a big fan of Braun Strowman. So anything that they keep going with the feud, them there, I really am a fan of that to see that keep going. Because then, you know, Elias ran off into the dark of the night yeah. <laughs> running from <laughs> Braun Strowman. So uh, I, I thought that was I thought that was good, and hopefully we'll keep seeing more from that. Yeah. Uh, what did you think about it overall yourself? Yeah, I enjoyed it, and I can't wait to see what unfolds yeah. between the two. Yeah, sorry, was it? I said I can't wait to see what unfolds between the two. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay, and then after that, we had Triple H and uh, Stephen McMahon come out with Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle again. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Triple H and um, Stephen McMahon are looking for an apology. Uh, both from Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey. Kurt Angle for running his mouth. And um, they want an apology from Ronda for slamming Triple H through the table at Elimination Chamber. Um, Kurt Angle tells Ronda, like, oh, don't do anything crazy here because I need my job kind of thing. Um, I really thought, you know, for any critics of Ronda Rousey, like, obviously, at WrestleMania, she just kept pointing at the, I mean, at Royal Rumble, she kept pointing at the WrestleMania sign, yeah. and it was kind of hokey, and then at Elimination Chamber, her first time on, like, cutting a promo, she was a little shaky, she was a little nervous, mm-hmm. um, but it, by the end of that promo, it was good, and then for me, the Monday Night Raw promo, like, I thought it was all good, like, the way she came out, she had her hair yeah. up, she had her leather jacket on, she had her rowdy Ronda Rousey shirt on like mm-hmm. she looked mad she looked mean like coming out to the ring she walked down there with like real charisma looks yeah. good doing that um and then um what else uh, I thought she was you know she was okay on the mic here um you know and she was how she said she was nobody's property mm-hmm. um and then Rhonda tells Stephanie to apologize for slapping her you know, mm-hmm. Stephanie again then does apologize, and then on the way out of the ring, Triple H um, turned around and pushed her at Angle. Yeah. That's just furthering the storyline. I think it's going to be at WrestleMania, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon versus Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey in a mix match challenge. Mm-hmm. So we'll have to just keep watching that and see yeah, how that goes. Well. But what did you think about this promo for Ronda Rousey? Yeah, I thought she did a lot better. Yeah, 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 a lot more believable yeah yeah she was believable (laughs) especially like just her attitude on her Mm -hmm. face like because she was in UFC and you know they always had like there weren't WWE promos like you got kind of long but you know you would always do like a square off face to face with your opponent and you you know even though you weren't fighting at your way in or whatever like you still would look mean to your to your opponent so she she does that really well yeah Uh, so we'll just have to see how she is for everything else um yeah so i'm excited I'm, I'm excited to have ronda there mm-hmm. uh let's get into smackdown now uh this is the last show that we watched for this week this show opened up with john cena now this is where he said that he was um you know he wants a title shot at fast lane mm-hmm. um yeah uh, so that he can get to wrestlemania And then so Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan come out and tell Cena that uh, if he wants to enter uh, Fastlane, he has to earn a spot. And later on, they're going to make a match between um, Cena and AJ Styles for John Cena to uh, qualify. But right after this, 
promo we had Sami Zayn versus Baron Corbin uh, and this uh, I really like this match because Kevin Owens was on the ringside uh, Baron Corbin ended up winning this match um, he did an end of days on Sami Zayn and pinned him mm -hmm. but Kevin Owens for me that was a highlight of the match him being at ringside doing commentary he finally said you know what I've been saying for weeks somebody finally mentioned something about Baron Corbin's hairline and how he needs to do something yes. for the like I love that he was like he was the best commentator on I know any show was, to me so far like he just he was pretty funny yeah eventually he's got to be he's got a future in it, like being a broadcaster for WWE whenever his actual wrestling career is over because oh, yeah. yeah he was like he was really good and he was really funny on the mic and he was saying like oh we're we, what are you looking for, Baron Corbin? Your hairline, like, because you're not confined. It, like, <laughs> oh man, yeah, like, yeah, they just need to, somebody needs to. Now it's somebody just needs to actually talk to Baron Corbin directly and tell him, and <laughs> so that he can change his look. Cause whole his whole look is not good for me. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he already knows that though, and he's like, I don't care. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think he doesn't care. I hope that's not the case, cause you know, part of being a wrestling entertainer like your looks is a part of it so he, he needs like now the last couple weeks I've you know I've actually come around on him as a performer I'm like oh some of his in ring performances like oh, he maybe he actually is a good performer and I, I just wasn't seeing it before mm -hmm. but he just still looks so dumb to me that I can't <laughs> I can't get over it oh my. <laughs> I'm just glad somebody finally pointed it out on the show <laughs> yeah uh, what and then so what then after that so then, um, the, oh D Dolph Ziggler came out and he attacked Owens on the ringside, kicked yeah. him in the back of the head, oh, yeah. and then uh, then what happened after that? We had um, the, yeah, so they all fought each other. Then Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan were backstage arguing over, you know, um, the whole. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn situation, mm -hmm. still holding out hope that this feud is going on, that they know something we don't know. Maybe the WWE doctor has already, he's the only one doctor, Dan Bryan has gone like around the world to different doctors. They've all cleared him saying, oh yeah, you're healthy enough to to wrestle again. Yeah. Like your concussions, like you, you don't seem to have any residual effects. Like you're, you'd be healthy, but it's just mm -hmm. the one WWE doctor, the guy, the one guy that matters that works for WWE, mm -hmm. that doctor says, hasn't cleared him yet so like maybe they know something that we don't know maybe he has finally been cleared by that doctor that doctor has come around and said okay yeah you're healthy enough to wrestle again mm -hmm. so hopefully they're setting up this feud between Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan so Daniel Bryan can make his return like unfortunately I wasn't watching wrestling when Daniel Bryan like got it started wrestling and you know had his big you know rise to stardom but I've been going back and watching all those matches and like wa just watching that that his old stuff I'm like oh man yeah I would love to see this guy wrestling now and cool. do stuff so hopefully hopefully that will be his return I'm still yeah so holding on to that dream so yeah well, you'll I, you haven't seen anything yet but you'll have to watch some stuff with me sometime okay uh what else did we have uh we had Ruby Riot versus Naomi um Ruby Riot got the win here yeah um, what else? Let's just go through this real quick. I'm not. I, I didn't think like, much of that one. Yeah, me either. And then SmackDown, it just it hasn't been as good to Raw as me. Like, mm -hmm. they have some. They have a lot of good stars on the show, but just none of the storylines stick out to me, or none of the matches stick out as much to me as the ones on, as Raw have as of late. Right. Yeah. Um, what else did we have? We had. Uh, we had a promo with the fashion police mm -hmm. and uh, what's a guy, Josh something, whatever, he's a star. He's got that new um, Unsolved show with oh. Notorious B.I.G. and yeah. Tupac. Um, you know, I thought that was a pretty funny promo. Mm -hmm. uh, then we had New Day and Usos come out. They cut a promo. Um, I really like this promo too. This is the one where Usos so they came out. They came out. They're always really good on the mic, uh, you know, talking all tough. But then, uh, and you know, New Day came out there. They were wearing all like black and gray. Mm -hmm. And then, like that's when, 
you know, like Usos were like making fun of them for doing all their bootio things and their pancake stuff, but then Big E got really serious and like got in their face, and I thought mm-hmm. I was like, oh wow, like look at this, like I thought that was a good promo. Like there's actually a good feud here because their matches are really good, and I thought this promo itself was good. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> and then we had the Bludgeon Brothers come out. Uh, you know, I think they went against a couple of jobbers and saw something, whatever they've been running that thing for a long time now so hopefully they're going to actually get the Bludgeon Brothers against some like real tag teams here soon yeah um besides just jobbers um you know I I don't know like whatever lower tier teams that they have tag teams that they have in Smackdown they can start having them like go against them out and start running through them so they can set up whatever they're going to do you know go for the championships Mm -hmm. eventually um, then we had whatever for that we had Shane McMahon cut a promo. Uh, he made his match uh, between Aiden English um, versus Shinsuke Nakamura, and then we had Bobby Roode and Randy Orton cut a promo, um, and then uh, you know Randy Orton was saying that you know it's the only title that hasn't he hasn't gotten in his career. Uh, so mm-hmm. I'm sure something's gonna come of that. We're gonna, but Ginger Mahal has been involved in this whole thing, so I don't know if it's gonna be some sort of like three way. Um, but there's some up some story storyline where, you know, obviously, Bobby Roode and Randy Orton are for sure gonna be going against each other for that mm-hmm. U.S. title. Uh, then we had then we had the English versus Nakamura match. Nakamura won, of course. Like I would never expect Aiden English to beat right. Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> Especially leading up to WrestleMania, now you don't want your main event because I I assume AJ Styles versus uh, Shinsuke Nakamura is going to be the oh well, it's not going to be the main event of WrestleMania, but it's going to be like the biggest attraction. Like because like I said, not a lot of people are like great big fans of Roman Reigns, but people um, you know they. Uh, because they already feel like they know what to expect from that match, but like fans like have been dying to see AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura. So I'm mm-hmm. sure, I'm sure AJ Styles is gonna, even though it's gonna be a six pack um, since John Cena uh, won his match, which happened at SmackDown. Uh, right after that, uh, we had John Cena versus Styles, and Cena had to win to get to Fast Lane. Yeah. Um, I'm sure AJ Styles is still going to win so that we still get to see the match that all the fans want to see, which is AJ Styles versus uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh, yeah. Um, um, yeah, so I, I feel like that was good. Um, I feel like the John Cena versus AJ Styles match was a good match mm-hmm. itself. Um, it gets John Cena into fast lane, so that's a, you know another guy that they can try to help sell tickets for that um for that event there um but then uh so what do you think of that like for me I said like I'm predicting AJ Styles is still going to win at Fastlane to hold the title so that'll be it will be just him and Nakamura at Wrestlemania um but uh you know, for John Cena, that means he's going to lose. If you go by my prediction, he'll still lose, and then he still doesn't have a way at WrestleMania. So, what do you what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I think what you have to say is pretty much. I can't think of anything else. Yeah. So, but what what, what do you think that would mean for John Cena then? I don't know. Maybe he might retire. <laughs> no, he's not going to retire. He's trying to get to WrestleMania. He's been talking I mean, about like how a... he's going to get to WrestleMania. He wants to get to WrestleMania. Earlier, you were talking about how you said that you think there's still a chance that you know he, it's going to be a match between him and Undertaker. So I think. Oh, that's and right. And he's been desperate, right? Yeah. He's been his whole character lately. He's been he's turned into like this super confident guy who's like never give up. Da 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 da. He's still doing the never give up, give up but yeah, it's coming from right. a place of like desperation now. He's like desperate. He loses the elimination chamber. He goes on Monday oh, Night Raw the next night and says like, "Oh man, I have to, 
I have to leave Monday Night Raw and go to SmackDown to try to get to WrestleMania now. To me, if he goes to Fastlane and loses Fastlane, then that's when he gets real desperate. And then that's when they finally announce, like, oh, okay, yes, like, I finally convinced The Undertaker to come out of retirement and have one last match with me at WrestleMania. Like, that's what... Yeah, I, that's what we talked about earlier. Yeah, I kind of yeah. I kind of feel like that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to still see this desperate John Cena. Yeah, you know, even after that match, and then that's when they finally announce, like, okay, even though John Cena said he was told that it wasn't going to happen, like he finally was able to pull some strings and get Undertaker to come back. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think about that. <laughs> But uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. That's the end of our show. Just one last thing here uh, to, you know, a little suggestion to anything that you would suggest that fans check out outside of wrestling or, uh, you know, besides watching, you know, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, 205 yeah. Live specifically, anything else. It could still be wrestling related, I suppose, but mm-hmm. anything else you would suggest fans check out? Oh, well, I know you would disagree with me, but... I would suggest you guys watch Orville. It's actually not as bad as some people make it out to be. (laughs) Okay, but I'm not saying I'm not making it out to be bad. I have not even watched it yet. I'm just like not interested in watching it because I've heard it's not any good. So (laughs) I'm glad that I'm happy for you when somebody is watching something and they enjoy it. I'm glad they are enjoying whatever it is that they're into. Yes. <laughs> I just don't think it's something I'm going to be into. I'm a nerd and everything, but, you know, all the commercials that I saw, like the, you know, trailers, like, running up to the premiere for Orville mm-hmm. made me think, like, oh, that doesn't look good. And then when all the reviews came out afterwards, like, and people were saying, like, it wasn't any good, I was like, okay, I'm not interested in watching it then but mm-hmm. if you decided to watch it and now you're liking it then I'm happy for you that you like it and makes me happy that you're enjoying something <laughs> it's, it's not something I feel like I'll enjoy but I will try it out since it is your suggestion this week yeah. uh, for me uh, I say one check out more of our channel I'm going to start I've like <laughs> been setting up everything on yeah. the on our um Mm channel which stands for Mikey's Mixed Media I've been setting everything up there on YouTube uh, I'm going to start mm. like streaming some games trying to make other videos on there um, so I think I finally figured out how to do the settings and everything to do that I've done a couple test streams so I think I'm good to go I'm going to start streaming you know whatever Fortnite uh, you know whatever other nerdy games I can yeah uh got I got Overwatch on PS4 I can stream got uh, Hearthstone on the computer it's pretty nerdy stream yeah, that yeah. whatever other games whatever I come across I'll try streaming it uh, so check out that uh, but then any, uh, something else that isn't related to the channel as well or wrestling or the wrestling shows mm-hmm. What would I say? Hmm. I would say go and check out. I would go check out Black Panther. I haven't seen it myself yet, but <laughs> that's something I actually hear good things about and <laughs> am interested in watching. So, you know, if you haven't seen it yet, go see that. Uh,. But yeah, guys, thank you for joining us and yep, giving you the show for me. I know we started this show late, so Andrea's already up later than she wants to be. Mm-hmm. So thank you, guys. We're going to end it here, and we'll see you again next week. All right, bye. Bye.